Thank you for clicking on the video. Uh, here today, I'm actually uh, making this video to kind of address some comments uh, that I've seen in uh, the comment section of a couple of my videos. And more or less what all these comments have in, in common and the general kind of theme that they were all hinting at uh, in terms of what they were asking me. More or less, why have I stuck with this sort of like budget approach and why have I been a proponent, I guess, of this older technology versus getting something new? Just kind of as a preface, I wasn't always like this. I didn't have this mentality of, uh, you know, older technology and being like super budget oriented. Um, I've always wanted to get a good deal. Uh, I've never been one to just go out and pay like market price, list price on something. But anyways, you know, this whole idea of used uh, items and older technology and you know, kind of, you know, that budget buying sort of stuff in that realm really wasn't my mentality, you know, for my entire, you know, adult life. Um, that's really something that I developed and really have like looked into over the last, you know, five years, you know, give or take six years, maybe. And for me, it really comes down to like, two main things why I do that. Number one, like I said, I've always been one to find a deal and you know get the best deal possible. But the main reason with that aspect of it is just I don't have the money, <laughs> the finances to really go and buy super expensive stuff. And that was initially what started me on this path of getting a lot of used items and trying to find stuff in that realm uh, was just because I don't have the money. Even now, I mean, I obviously I'm not monetized uh, at the time of release of this video. Uh, I'm not monetized on YouTube. I'm a very small fish in a very large ocean of YouTube. Uh, so like I'm not making any money off this. I just do it for fun. My full time job, I, I don't make you know, an insane amount of money. I, I make decent money for where I live. I live in a small rural town out in the country in Illinois. Uh, so like I, I'm not making a whole ton of money. Uh, so in terms of the actual price, you know, just price alone, I don't have the finances to just go out and buy, even on a sale price or on a deal, to go out and buy a $2,000 projector or, you know, speakers that cost five, six, $700, you know, or, you know, Blu-ray players or a 4k player that cost two, three, four hundred, five hundred dollars $500. You know, I just, I don't have the money to, to put into that sort of thing. So I've, especially over, like I said, the last five, six years, I've always tried to find the best deal possible and really try and stretch the dollar as much as I could uh, with that because like I said I just don't have the money and this sort of hobby of the home theater while I enjoy it I know with my wife we have more pressing stuff that comes up I've had medical bills in the the past that have superseded that we've had stuff we've had a fix here at our house you know that supersedes buying, you know, what effectively, you know, is just like leisure items here in the home theater, even though sometimes I still do. And that still annoys my wife. I, I understand that, uh, you know, there's those things. I mean, more recently, I mean, as I'm filming this video, I've been going through, uh, an insurance claim for damages on my car. I haven't had a car for going on like three weeks now. Uh, so, you know, that I'm going to have to pay towards that. So, you know, it's just one of those things, the pure bottom line on the finance part, I just don't have the money to go out and buy that stuff. Yeah, it'd be cool to go and get a 4K projector or, you know, some real high end Blu-ray player or whatever, you know, some speakers that are like super high end, you know, whatever the case is. I, I'm not blind to like wanting to do something like that. That would be neat. But that's not in the cards for me. Even if I really wanted to do that, I don't have the money to go and do that. 
But beyond that strict financial part of really trying to like stretch every dollar I can and get the most bang for the buck out of what I can actually put into this hobby. I really sat down and wanted to, again, stretch the value, the bang for the buck, the, the best you know way I could spend my dollars that I could put into this hobby. And when I found that thread about the projectors, that led me down the path of looking at older projectors. And then, like I said, that kind of flooded into all the other aspects of my home theater. And it really let me analyze, okay, what am I wanting to accomplish in my home theater? Am I really wanting to get the newest, greatest, top of the line technology and try and like go out and really be on the front line of all this new stuff that's coming in? Or am I okay to settle with older technology and older formats in whatever stuff that maybe isn't the newest standard or the newest greatest thing? But is it still enjoyable enough for me and what I'm wanting to accomplish in my home theater? And once I kind of made that decision of, you know, I just want to have a good, solid viewing experience and I want to be able to get the best bang for my buck on a lot of these equipment items, you know, and where is that? And that's in the used market and that's on typically older technology. And like my null LED projector is the main example. The quality that I have experienced in the six or eight months, whatever it is that I've owned that projector with an array of content, whether it's DVD, whether it's Blu-ray, or whether it's a downscaled 4K uh, disc that I have. That projector, save for the lowest point in the black level, is the best projector I've ever had. This projector, for the $500 I spent on it, outperforms every projector I've ever had. Like I said, yes, okay, the black levels could be better on it, but every JVC I've owned, every other projector like the Sony, the BenQ, the Epson I had, everything I've ever owned and had down here as my primary video source, that projector has just completely blown it out of the water in terms of color accuracy, uh, interesting contrast ratio, the, you know, just levels and shades of color in black to white, even though the blacks don't go as deep on it, the overall grayscale, the gamma tracking, everything that's on that projector just completely outweighs everything else that I've ever had here as a primary video source. And that's just for the projector. I'll, I'll touch on a few other things here in a minute. Uh, but that thing, and kind of, again, how I got into this budget conscious stuff was from looking at that AVS forum and realizing older items that have been, you know, used and kind of discarded because everyone wants new stuff. You can give that stuff a second life and really find extremely high quality items. And like I said, these projectors and my null LED projector and its Vivitech counterpart, even though they were like 15 grand, that's still on the lower scale of some of these real super high end projectors from the mid to late 2000s and early 2010s. I mean, when you look into like Christie Titans and other like Runco projectors and Barco projectors and that sort of thing, uh, you're getting up into 20, 30, 40 grand, you know, plus on some of these things. And the components that are in them dwarf anything that you would get for a fraction of that price nowadays. I mean, yes, I, I've seen demos of like real high-end JVCs and like Epsons that have the laser projector system in them and stuff. And those are all great for what they are, but you're also going to pay a huge price on that stuff in comparison to finding these projectors. And uh, like I said, and I don't want to just focus on the projectors, the speakers. 
my end game speaker video with my JBL 8340s that I have. Again, I tried to look at what did I want to accomplish here in my home theater. Those speakers and what I wanted to accomplish, I wanted to have actual movie theater cinema grade professional uh, speakers here in my home theater. And that was for a number of reasons, just something I always had nostalgia for growing up and then seeing other channels that kind of replicated this on YouTube. But that's really what I wanted. I wanted real cinema speakers that you would get in an actual movie theater. And granted, these aren't the newest thing that people have nowadays in, in theaters, but these JBL speakers were the standard for years and years and years, decades practically, in movie theaters. And that's what I wanted to accomplish here. And so when I was able to find these pair of speakers for like $70, and in my opinion, especially for surround speakers, you're going to get just as good, if not better quality on these JBL professional speakers that I got for a fraction of the price. And again, it all goes back to what did I want to accomplish in my home theater and trying to stretch the budget and really trying to milk every uh, dollar that I could out of what I wanted to put in to this room down here. You know, and like I said, those speakers have been great. I've watched a lot of content since I got those like a month or two ago. I definitely have felt that they were worth what I paid for them and definitely better than any other speaker I've had as a surround speaker here in my home theater. And that's just to talk about, you know, the speak those speakers or my projector. Same with my center channel. Uh, which I'm going to do a video on, you know, coming up soon, my Infinity speaker that I paid like $30 for off of Shop Goodwill. I put that up against most any other center channel that's going to be within a couple hundred dollar range up until you get an, into like, you know, real high end center channels or people who use an actual freestanding bookshelf or tower speaker is a center channel. I think for its design and for what it is, that one for $30 is going to be a way better value, you know, and uh, again, it's partly because of me wanting to stretch the budget, but also because I'm a big proponent in this used technology and giving used technology a second chance and a second life after it's been discarded for whatever reason from its original owner. And that's just on the technology part. I, I could go into, again, like media. I mean, outside of a handful of items on my media shelf here, everything I've bought is used. Very rarely do I think the value is actually there in buying a brand new piece of media that you can get it used at a much better cost and still have, you know, a great experience with it and you don't have to go out and spend $30 for a 4K or 20 or $30 on a Blu-ray release. You can wait a while and then get it for a couple bucks on a thrift store find or even buying older media, buying a DVD of a film, especially a catalog title that's going to give you maybe not the greatest picture quality in terms of the actual encoding and bit rate that's there but it's gonna give you something comparable as long as you have good equipment and a good projector and screen to put it on or a TV or whatever. And so you don't have to go out and buy the newest Blu-ray, the newest 4K, you can get a DVD and still maintain that level of quality. But again, I looked at what do I wanna do here in my home theater? I just wanna have a good enjoyable experience with good picture quality, good audio quality. I don't need the greatest thing in the world. And I really wanted to stretch my budget. And the best way to me to stretch that budget is to go on the used market and find secondhand items that are high quality for a fraction of the price. And that, again, like this Rotel receiver I have, because that receiver was initially like two or $3,000 when it came out in 2013. And I would dare say that that one's gonna put out just as good, if not better, audio and picture clarity than what some of these newer ones to that price point are going to do. You know, and it's, I bought it used, needed a little bit of, you know, TLC and a little bit of tinkering to get it to work, a little bit of upkeep. But once that all got done, I was in for, you know, I, I think it was 
uh, hundred and fifty dollars or a hundred dollars total after I bought it and paid for the few repairs I had to do, you know. And like I said, I would put that up against something that's three, four times that price. Like I said, I got a lot of comments and people who've asked about different things in terms of why I've stuck with this sort of budget and value based home theater versus going out and getting newer items and newer stuff. And the long and short of it, even though I've went on this whole like 20 or 30 minute video, whatever it is, is basically what I wanted to accomplish here was to get the best audio and picture quality and movie and video gaming experience I could get in this room for the most budget friendly price. And looking at that and realizing that to do that, I felt my best option was to go the used route. And I've had no regrets doing that. Like I said, the audio and video in this room uh, granted, could be better, and there's other room treatments and stuff I could probably do, you know, or like my cabinet that's behind the camera here that has a bunch of memorabilia stuff in it is a, basically a big glass box that leaving the room would probably pro provide an improvement in, like, audio quality, but there's a lot of personal reasons why I have that here, and so I, I have it in here, but, you know, there's other things I could do to improve but overall, given what I've paid versus what the total value originally of all these items that are here in my home theater is and the level of quality I get versus what I paid, I would put this up against any other home theater. And I would say this thing would compete with that. So anyways, I don't want to ramble. Uh, I've already said that once. So, uh, but yeah, I, I do appreciate all the comments and the feedback. I mean, if it wasn't for the people who've commented about stuff like this, I probably wouldn't have had the thought to make a video. So, you know, I really do appreciate it. Like I said, it's humbling, especially with all the, the comments, the likes, the subscribers. I really do appreciate it. And, uh, you know, Post down in the comments about your opinions about, you know, what I had to say about all this and how you guys have put together your home theater if you had one, uh, have one. You know, I, I enjoy hearing everyone's story and I enjoy conversing with everyone. So with that, I'm going to say uh, again, thanks to everyone and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.